So the story of this computer starts, um, again, it's the same um, uh, lot of computers that I bought from a recycler um, on Facebook Marketplace. So uh, the repair videos I, that I've done for the SWT PC 6800, that was the same lot. And this is just, this is one other computer that was in, in the lot. Um, it's a Franklin Ace uh, 100 um, from um, Franklin Computer Corporation. Um, but this was the first uh, computer that they made. And um, it's enormous. Um, it's bigger than the SWT 6800. What's interesting about this, this is really um, a kind of landmark machine. Um, it's a clone um, of the Apple II. And it's actually slightly more than a clone. Um, it, it's, it was regarded by Apple as a copy of the Apple II. And the court case around this computer actually changed the law around um, software copyright. So it's a pretty a, a, important kind of landmark um, uh, uh, legal case that happened around this, uh, this computer. So um, let me um, take the, the, the lid off it and um, we'll take a look around. So it kind of comes apart in a uh, interesting way. So this uh, darker kind of brown, ready brown thing comes off the top, and you can it kind of reveals the motherboard. The other thing is that this, the keyboard cover, once you have that one off, just slides out of the way. Uh, RAM. This is the, the the main operating system ROMs there. There's a the Franklin serial number again, and you have the expansion slots labeled. Uh, zero to seven. There's eight of those. Uh, CPU, uh, six ROMs, video outs back there. Um, this seems to be um, a memory extension board of, um, from Franklin. It's a copy of another another board, I think. And this is a flop. Can you see that? That's a, a floppy disk interface. And those all came in the system. Um, so the power supply uh, it's here, and again, it's got the same serial number. And you might notice this. I'm pretty sure that this is not an original feature. I mean, it might be, I guess. So I want to give you a better view of this cooling uh, thing here. The reason I think this is budged in is just because look, look at those, those holes. They're not they're not regular. So it's it's quite an interesting duct thing that they did there. Um, um, but anyway. Um, let's get on and see if this power supply works. So I wanted to show you uh, this power connector. Um, you can kind of see there. Um, so I can disconnect the power from the main board and then um, I can test. That was a bit of a tense moment turning on a power supply for the first time in don't know how many years. Oh, you can hear it. So the fans are spinning. That's a good sign. So um, let's check. Uh, so we'll start with plus five. Uh, 5.9, that's a bit high. Minus five. Minus five, that's good. And then I think this is minus 12. Minus 13.8. Plus 12 is 14. So my guess is it's outputting in the right range. Five is high, 12 is high, um, but it's not plugged into anything. And quite often power supplies do is when you actually put a load on them, the voltage droops. So I think it's gonna be okay to plug it in. What I'm gonna do is plug it in, sort of switch off the power supply, plug it into the board, power it up. I'm gonna replace the memory board that was here. Um, and then I just wanna see, I'll test the voltages again and volts is now way low. Four. Minus five is good. Minus 12 is good. Plus 12 is also good. So the five volt rail's low. That's bad. That's probably not even functioning at 
three, yeah, three point seven volts. That's too low. So we got um. Looks like we had a, a, a spider living in there. Um, yep. And the the underside, it, it has this kind of foil feel to it, which is like um, arcade video game boards of the same time. It's kind of double-sided. Um, so, and you see how dusty it is. So um, I think it might be good just to clean this all up before I do much more. And what's funny about this is most power supplies come with these warnings that you shouldn't open them and there's there's nothing here that says don't open this not that that would have stopped me but Ooh. all right i need to get a vacuum cleaner for this Ooh, look. Give you a look at this. Look at those. I think those are diodes. You see those kind of bulges on, and they connect through on one side. Yeah, and then if you look down on the solder mask, um, yeah, they they have D and then a number in front of each of them. So I think I think those are big old diodes. I'm half thinking that this is a full bridge rectifier design, um, where they've 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 made the rectifier out of these giant diodes. That wouldn't surprise me. Um, there's also there's a brand name down here. I kind of Aztec. Wow. Aztec made this power supply. Um, yeah, Aztec branded stuff all over. So, um, pretty dusty. So let's, uh, I'm gonna clean it up. Um, I think this power supply is fine. It's outputting the right voltages. I think the problem's on the board. So uh, let's get going. I've um, vacuumed out the power supply, got some dust out of it. It looks in pretty good shape inside. There are two reefer caps in there, which make me a little bit nervous. There's nothing obviously failed or bulging. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to power it up again on the bench. I've removed all of the adapter cards. So, so what I'm going to do is power it up and um, see what happens. Okay, so power cost meter says it's consuming 30 watts. Can you see that? Um, so let's just check the uh, let's check the voltages um, across uh, five volt rail again. Come on. Oh, oh, look at that! 4.6. That's, there's a chance that that's run, actually running and okay. So this is the next day, um, and I cleaned the board um, with uh, deoxit. Um, so this stuff, which seems to be miracle working thing, um, vacuumed the power supply, cleaned the board, took the board out, um, and uh, I discovered a screw underneath it. Um, I guess that might have been causing a problem. Um, and what's interesting now is, um, if I turn it on and then show you what the, um, voltage is are on the board, 
from the power supply. So remember yesterday it was like three or 3.6 volts. That was what the five volt rail was showing. And um, today um, it's quite different. Okay, so it's ground. So I'm gonna touch on the five volt line. There you go. So that's 4.9 volts. So that's much healthier. So all the voltages are now perfect. And you can see um, the machine's booting up now. Uh, but yeah, so it's gone from not working at all to just cleaning it up and it all working, which is kind of bizarre, but good. I mean, we'll chalk that up to deoxid again because it seems to work miracles. So here it is, um, keyboards case back together, makes a little bit too much noise for my liking. The fan and that power supply is quite loud, um, but here um, it seems to have a basic interpreter. Hello from Franklin, case 100, and upper and lower case characters, uh, which was different from the Apple II. And seems to like basic, and then you've got that reset button to break the program. I actually wonder what break does. Same thing. Cool. So whilst researching the Franklin Ace, um, I came across uh, some information about um, how um, Steve Jobs and Wozniak decided to put an Easter egg into the uh, Macintosh computer. This is after the Apple II incident and after they'd won the case against Franklin uh, Computer Corporation. They decided to put an Easter egg into the ROMs for uh, the Macintosh so that if in a courtroom the Macintosh was, was, was copied, they could walk up to the copied machine, type in a command, and it would, uh, it would, it would show an icon that said stolen from Apple. So, um, uh, and they did this and they hid it in the ROM. Um, apparently, um, they compressed the image, uh, and they made it quite hard to find so that the, anyone copying it wouldn't realize it was there. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just booting up this Mac. Um, it's not a 128K or a, a 512K. Uh, so this is the Macintosh Plus, And I think, uh, I, I think this will still have the same original ROM with the, the hidden Easter egg image. So let me just go uh, into about Finder. So I'm just going to zoom in a bit. Um, okay, um, so what you have to do is press the um, interrupt button and I have a uh, Q-tip that I'm going to push. Uh, there's a button on the side uh, and you can just kind of push it in the side of the case. And uh, this is the, the, the debug prompt. Um, and now I've got to type in a, um, uh, a command there. Okay, so the spacebar needs to be fixed. I'll, uh, I need some deoxit on that. Um, so one one eight. So this is the command that you type in. Um, and again, this is um, Steve Jobs and wasn't there. Imagine, imagine doing this in a courtroom. And then what it would show is this little thing up in the corner there. And you see that it says stolen from Apple computer. Oh, there you go. So it's just a small icon uh, with a little Apple Apple logo, stolen from Apple computer. There you go. Still there.